Hello, hello, and welcome to our Vesper model video. Um, so this is an optional video, you don't have to watch this one, but if you're a visual person and you wanna actually see what the molecules look like, this is for you. So I'm gonna do this in two parts because I don't have enough pieces of my model system to make all the different models. So I'm gonna start with two reds and then we'll go from there. So if we have a molecule and we look at our central atom, remember there, we would first try to figure out how many reds are around your central atom. So for this system right here, I can see one, two reds. So two regions of high electron density. So for this system right here, I would say that it's going to have two reds, like we just said, and then it's going to have both an electronic and a molecular geometry called linear. So these are completely flat across. If I asked you to solve for the bond angle, I would expect for you to tell me that it is 180 degrees right here, and you can pretty much see that one. So it's linear. No matter how you look at it, linear, two reds, the easiest one that we have. Then we take it up a notch and we go to three reds, okay? So here, central atom, ignore these two white pieces on the end. We don't have any models that are perfectly three reds, so you just have to ignore that, okay? All right, so we have our central atom right here, and then we can see our one, two, and three reds around our central atom. So this would have an electronic geometry of trigonal planar. Um, because we don't have any lone pairs on the central atom, we would say that it also has a molecular geometry called trigonal planar. It has the word planar because it's flat. See, it's a plane, and you could spin it around. If you wanted to look at the bond angles, you would see from here to here, here to here, and here to here, you have 120 degrees, okay? So this is what a trigonal planar molecule looks like, three reds, 120 degrees. Now, what happens if you have three reds, but two are bonds and one is a lone pair? So I'm gonna remove this piece right here, maybe. There we go, okay. And so now we're going to replace this with a lone pair. So one, two, three regions of electron density, two are bonds, one is a lone pair. In this case, it still has one, two, three reds, so its electronic geometry is still considered trigonal planar. Now its molecular geometry, the shape of the atoms themselves, that is not trigonal planar. Instead, we say that it's bent. So the molecule is bent, which we obviously can see. Let me try to hold it in a different way. So you can see it's bent, it's in a bent shape. And then this angle right here between our two bonds would be less than 120 degrees. So we would always assume that our electron space here, this negative charge is gonna be sucked in a little bit closer to the central atom than it would be if it was spaced out in a bond. So because the electrons are, spaced, are pulled a little bit closer to the atom, remember the nucleus is positively charged, so they're gonna be pulled in nice and tightly. When those electrons get down here, they carry that negative charge, so they're actually gonna push these bonds down. So electrons need that elbow space and they like push like this, so they push the bonds down. So this bond angle, instead of just being 120 degrees like we saw with our trigonal planar shape, this one would then just be less than 120 degrees. Okay, simple as that. All right, so now last one of this part before I pause. And we have four reds. Okay, so this one right here, um, I am out of balls as you can see, so I had to use different colored weird ones. But this is our tetrahedral shape. So let me just say, pick this orientation, I'll try to stick with it for you. So our central atom is red. We can see that we have four regions of density. One, two, three, and four. Okay, four reds, four regions of dens density. This molecule specifically would be referred to as tetrahedral for its electronic geometry. Its molecular geometry would also be tetrahedral. Now what's cool about this is it has tetra, so four faces. So the faces are one, two, three, and then four. That's where it gets that name from. Um, bond angle, so from bond here to here, that's actually 109.5 degrees, every single one of these. Now the one thing I really want you to be able to see is kind of how these planes go. So let me see if I can align this in a way. So right now what I have, let me back up, my white one and my gray one are in the exact same plane. So it's like flat, it's completely flat against you. So if I were to hold up a piece of paper, the white, the red, and the gray, silver one, whatever, would all completely be in a plane. Now what you'll notice is that this green one is facing directly at you. Like see how far ahead it's like basically on my arm, okay? And then this orange one right here is really close to my ear. It's like an inch away from my ear. So we see that the red, the white, and the silver one, same plane, nice and flat, green sticking at you, orange back at my ear. So now I can rotate this again, and now we can see orange, red, green, all three of those flat, planar, 
the gray one is now coming at you and the white one is again next to my ear and so you end up with this really neat little shape where it basically looks like you have a pyramid on the bottom and then one sticking straight up. And when we do this, the electrons are perfectly arranged so they're completely spaced as far away as they possibly can be from each other. And when that happens, we have exactly 109.5 degrees. All right, so now let's stick with four reds here and I'm gonna take off the silver one, that works. Why not? Okay, so we still have four reds except for this time it's one, two, three bonds and now we have a lone pair here. So one, two, three, and four. So four reds always is gonna have an electronic geometry of tetrahedral, but now for our molecular geometry, it is completely different. Our molecular geometry would be referred to as trigonal pyramidal. And so now what we can see is that our bonds from here to here, these haven't really moved too much but just like a tiny bit, okay? Because remember, same thing as we did before, when that lone pair, when those electrons were originally in the bond, they were a little bit higher away from the central atom. But now that we've removed that bond and we've replaced it with an, a lone pair, the electrons are sitting a little bit closer to the atom. So as the electrons come down, the negative charge comes down, it kind of gets in the way, it interferes with the negative charges here and here and here. It pushes them down. Remember, electrons need elbow space, they push, push, push. And so these angles from here, let me do it this way. Here used to be 109.5 degrees. Now it's just less than 109.5 degrees. I'm never gonna ask you to say like 107, 104, less than 109.5 is good enough for me. All right, let's do one more. Um, let's keep our orange and white, that'll work. All right, so red central atom, we have two atoms over here. I've got one, two reds here, but now if, you, if I turn it, you will see my lone pair sitting on my atom. So I've got uh, one, two lone pairs, so four reds overall. One, two, three, and four. Four reds overall, and then that would give us, because it's four reds, an electronic geometry that is tetrahedral. Then if we have two reds and two, <laughs> I'm sorry, four reds that come from two bonds and two lone pairs, that would then be called bent. And so that's just like water. So this is exactly what water looks like. So we have the bonds, the bonds. Water is completely flat though. It's planar. You can see if you turn it on its side, it would be completely flat. So it's all within a plane, which I think is kind of cool, but it is bent. And then you would see that one lone pair like this, if we put it like this for our plane, one lone pair is gonna go this way and one lone pair is gonna be this way. Bill Nye likes to describe this shape as a Mickey Mouse, so it's kind of like having ears. Um, so if that works for you, that works for me. All right, I'll be right back with five reds. Back at you with five reds. So five reds are pretty easy to see, at least when counting reds, but then it gets a lot more complicated from there. So let's start by counting our reds. So here we have our cent central atom. We have one, two, three, four, five bonds, five reds. So this is a molecule that has the electronic shape that is called trigonal bipyramidal. Because there are no lone pairs on the central atom, that also means that its molecular geometry is called trigonal bipyramidal. Um, we also can see that we have several different bond angles with this system here. Now the way I like to think about this molecule is you essentially have a linear molecule right here in the middle, and then you have a trigonal planar molecule right here that you've kind of smashed together. So you have a two red system system and then a three red system that you've combined to make this incredible five red system. So when you look at the bond angles, you're really just combining all of the bond angles you've had before when you are looking at the two and three red system, plus there's one on top of it, okay? So now we can still see from our linear piece that 180 degrees, okay, right there for that bond angle, pretty straightforward just from top to bottom, okay, 180 degrees. We can also see that from the top to each side one, that's going to be up 90 degrees right there, okay? You can also see from the bottom up to the side, those will also be 90 degrees. And then if I flip this and I turn it a little bit, so you're staring straight down the middle, you can also see that we have 120 degrees right here between these bonds right there in the center where our trigonal planar shape usually is, okay? So we have a five red system, electronic geometry and molecular geometry, both called trigonal bipyramidal. We have 180 degrees, 90 degrees, and then 120 degrees. So now let's remove a bond and replace it with a lone pair. So I'm always going to remove one of these first. So the one where it's 120 degrees between each other, that's the one you wanna remove first, one of those. It doesn't matter which one, just pick one. So I'm gonna take this one first. 
All right, so now we've removed this bond and now we're replacing it with a lone pair. So we have one, two, three, four bonds, one lone pair, five regions of density overall. So now this shape is called seesaw, and if I flip it here, you should be able to see why. So we have our central atom here, we would have our two base pieces, so this is like what's on the ground, right, so here. And then you have your two atoms that go straight out from the side, so picturing a seesaw, one person would sit here, one person would sit here, and then they would seesaw back and forth and back and forth like that. And so again, here you have your base atoms at the bottom. So if you look down this piece, this is completely straight right there, but then you still have that 120 angle down here. So now the big piece though, is that we've replaced this bond with a lone pair. So now all of our angles become less than. So this is now less than 120 degrees. Um, you could also comfortably say that this is less than 90 degrees. Um, some people would say or argue that this is less than 180 degrees. Um, we would take that as well. You could say 180 or less than 180 because they're just we're, we're always arguing about that one so we'd accept either for that one okay so electronic geometry is still trigonal by pyramidal but the molecular geometry is called seesaw now i would remove another one let's see here which one do i want to remove another white one okay removing another white one now you can see all almost immediately that we've formed a t shape okay so you can actually see that t so now we have a central atom here one, two, three bonds, <laughs> almost did it again, and then one and two lone pairs. Let me do it straight down the camera. So one and then two lone pairs, just like that. So we have one, two, three, four, five regions of density. Five regions of density means we're going to have trigonal bipyramidal, but then our molecular geometry is going to be T-shaped. Now for our bond angles here, again, you see that 180 degrees, you could argue less than 180 degrees, that's fine with me too. And then right here, you've got that 90 degree angle, but because because we have the presence of two lone pairs right here, I really would probably be more comfortable with you telling me that it's less than 90 degrees right there, okay? All right, one more, we need to remove one more, keep removing the white pieces, the ones that were at that 120 degree angle right there. Now we're left with this shape right here. You've seen this one before, tons of times, linear, okay? But still, one, two, three, four, and five. So a lone pair coming here, a lone pair coming directly at me, and then a lone pair going right there, kind of towards my door, but you don't know where that is, so over that way, okay? So then you have one, two, three lone pairs, four, five total reds, so that gives us an electronic geometry of trigonal bipyramidal, a molecular geometry of linear. Your bond angle then would be about 180 degrees. Again, you could argue less than 180 degrees, and I'd be totally fine with that. I'll be right back with six reds. Back at you with six reds. So this is what we call an octahedral molecule. So hopefully y'all can see this. Um, I tried to keep a similar color coding scheme as we did for six reds. So what you'll see is that across here in my plane, when I slice it in half right there, when I take it perpendicular to the molecule, um, you will see that I have all of my white balls right there. Again, I have my red one above and my orange one below. Um, but what you can see is that we have almost that same linear shape that we keep seeing over and over again. So you have that 180 degree angle from the top one to the bottom. But now what we have with an octahedral shape is if I turn this and do this properly, there we go, you will see that we have 90 degree angles from these ones as well. So you've essentially formed what is referred to as a square planar shape. So this time we have a square planar shape instead of trigonal planar, and we have the linear shape, and that's how we've combined to make octahedral. So overall you have the linear, and then these four would be square planar. Okay, we bring those all together. So let's talk about octahedral. So octahedral has six regions of density, one, two, three, three, four, five, and six. Six regions of density always has the electronic geometry called octahedral. Octa referring to as eight, so eight faces. So you would see this first one coming from the top one coming at you. One, two, three, and four. Same thing, I'm gonna flip it upside down. Then we've got five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so eight faces kind of has a shape of like a diamond, if you think of it like that, um, if you were able to like connect those faces. All right, so octahedral shape for our electronic geometry, because there's no lone pairs on this specific molecule, I would also say our, that our molecular geometry is octahedral. Bond angles, I kind of already went over this, but just to be clear, um, 90 degrees from the top to the side, also 90 degrees from side to side here in the square planar shape along the, the middle. And then we have 180 degrees from top to bottom, but also 180 degrees from side all the way over to other side. So let me do it again here, from this one to this one, 180 degrees there, 
also top to bottom. Okay, so we have another one there. Um, so now let's remove one. This time what I'm gonna do is remove this bottom one. So unlike with five reds, we remove the top and bottom ones when we do it with six reds. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay, got it. So now what we have here is one, two, three, four, five bonds, and I've replaced the bottom with a lone pair. So this is what our molecule looks like like this. You can see that it's flat on the bottom, so you still have that square planar shape where it's completely flat, completely planar there. The 90 degree angle still holds, you can still see that. The 180 still holds from top to bottom, side to side, you can still see that one. Um, the only difference now is that there's a lone pair right here. So we would assume probably correctly that it's going to push and all these bonds are going to try to peak up just a tiny bit. They're going to try to be pushed up if they can because remember there are electrons being shared right here, electrons right here, they're going to repel each other. So they're just going to move away a tiny bit. So if you were to say that this angle is less than 90 degrees, I would agree with you. Okay. All right, so this was our six regions of electron density with our square pyramidal molecular geometry. Okay, square pyramidal. This one, that's what this one is called. Um, octahedral for the electronic geometry still, but square pyramidal for our molecular. I think it's a really cool looking one. All right, so now let's move it away and we're going to take away one bond and add a lone pair. So we're going to take this one away. Now we take away the top one. Cool. All right, here we have one, two, three, four bonds. There's a lone pair here coming at you, and then there's a lone pair in the back coming at me. I'll change it like this so you again can see the orientation of the molecule. So we have a bond angle of 180 degrees from top all the way to the bottom. I can change it again like this. You can see 180 degrees here. You can also see 90 degrees here. What you hopefully can see is that it's flat. It is planar, so this is the square planar shape. So we have six regions of density. Electronic geometry is octahedral. Molecular geometry is square, planar, flat. Bond angles 90 degrees and 180 degrees, okay? Um, again, you could assume that your uh, lone pair is right here, so if you assume that they're being pushed and you would say less than 90 degrees for your angle, I'd be okay with that too. All right, so now you have to remove another bond and replace it with a lone pair. At this point, these are all the same. They're all equivalent, so I can remove any one of these. So I'll just take this one off. Did I pick a good one or a bad one? Oh, good, that was fast. All right, so now we're back to this shape. We've seen this before. Again, same shape, same name. This is called T-shaped. The only difference now is we have one lone pair coming at you, one lone pair going straight up, one lone pair coming at me. So we still have six regions of density, three lone pairs, three bonds, six regions of density. This is an, a, an octahedral electronic geometry, T-shaped molecular geometry. For your bond angles, you're still going to see about 180 degrees here, but because we have so much lone pair activity right here, you for sure are going to expect for both of these bonds to be pushed down a tiny bit. So this bond angle that was 90 degrees in the octahedral shape is now probably closer to 89, 88, something like that. So we would say less than 90 degrees. All right, one more, you guys, hang in there. So the last one to be removed is right down here, obviously, because that would allow for our um, electrons and our bonds to be as far away from each other as completely possible. And remember, nature always likes symmetry, so this is how we could get a symmetrical shape. So now again, we have our central atom here. We've got one, two bonds, and then we have one, two, three, and four um, lone pairs. I can do it this way, so you can see again, one is on top, one is on the side, one is below, and one is on the other side. And then you have an atom coming before and after you, so in and out of the plane. So this shape, you've seen this one before as well. This is our linear shape. We have six regions of density, two bonds, four lone pairs. Our electronic geometry would then be octahedral. Molecular geometry would be linear. Bond angles are going to be 180 degrees. And that, my friends, is Vesper in a nutshell. I hope this was helpful. Um, remember, if you need help, use Piazza. Come to office hours. We're here for you. Have a good one. Drink water.